Hello, beautiful internet family. My name is Dan Davis, and I'm the creative director at dancetube.tv, as well as the Fearless Drone Academy, which is the ultimate online drone course for beginners. And in today's video, I've got my review of Drone Link for the Mini 2. Now in this video, I'm gonna be testing the waypoints as well as the following mode, because they're like the most requested features. But Drone Link has a bunch of other features um, that you can see as I'm kind of navigating through the menu here. But in this video, I actually do have a giveaway for five Drone Link codes. So keep watching this video to find out how to enter that giveaway. I also really wanted to showcase the desktop version or the web version of Drone Link because it actually allows you to plan out your waypoints. There's a bunch of features there and you can even execute like a flight simulator to show you like what it's going to look like based on the waypoints you've set which is a really cool feature. And it's a nice way to just set it up in the comfort of your home. And then I literally, after I'd set up, I think three missions I set up uh, through the, the website version of Drone Link, I then went straight out, tested those missions, and it actually worked really well. So this is the waypoint planning component of Drone Link. You can also plan other missions and uh, set up other tasks through the actual desktop version of Drone Link. But I love the interface. I love the offering they have here and it's really easy to navigate, which again is um, really lovely. So you can see with this, I had the um, Mavic Mini when I originally tested the Mavic Mini with Drone Link. This is the mission that I set up. I just called it MM for Mavic Mini, and it was the Lighthouse mission. You can see it was quite elaborate. There were a few different things going on here. It was quite a fun little mission. Um, so that's what I previously tested, and the idea of what we're gonna do today is actually set up a mission right here and I'll probably set up a few different waypoint missions. And then I'm gonna go out and then I'm going to test it on the field to see how it performs. I'll also be testing out the following functionality as well. Um, but this is just showing you the actual desktop component, which is quite advanced and there's so many different features um, in this software. DroneLink have generously offered five codes to my audience. So that means that five lucky people will get access to the basic package here, which is the initial hobbyist plan uh, that I've been using for a very long time now myself. So you will get full access to this. It's a one-time payment, but you'll get it absolutely free for the five people uh, that win this giveaway. And the way you can win this giveaway is leaving a comment below for the question that I'm about to ask. I love this question. It is, what is the most ridiculous or funny question a bystander has asked you about your drone when you were flying? So that's the question. Drop your answers in the comments below and we will choose five lucky winners to get free access to the Drone Link basic plan. Now coming back to the Drone Link Waypoint Planner. So we'll be using my desktop here to set up some of the initial waypoints um, and then I'll try to set up some other waypoints when I'm out on the field. But this is just showing you the power of Drone Link, how you can plan everything in advance and then go out and execute those missions. And um, so I know that this is the park I wanna check out down here. So what I wanna do is I will click on Create it will pop up with some basic templates and you know some guidance around how to navigate this interface. We just want waypoints, so we're gonna click on that. And then we're gonna make the waypoint starting point right there. So that's now the initial like plan as such. That's where I would go to if I closed out of this, for example. You can now see I've got the lighthouse plan and I've got the new waypoints plan. Click on that one and it will take me back to that plan that we literally just set up with just a few simple clicks. So I've just gone ahead and named it Mini 2 2022 Test, and I will save that. Now that's what it's known as. Um, continue editing the current version. Uh, so we'll continue editing this current version. So you can see that's now the plan. It's called Mini 2 2022 Test. You can see there's a few different points that have automatically set up for us. I can then move those around however I see fit, uh, move them in all different ways, and it's gonna set up that curved line as you can see to hopefully make a relatively smooth path for us. So this is the point here. This is where I will probably set up the drone right near the grass here, launch the drone. And then when I press start mission, it will take me over to this first point, which is the approach point uh, with an altitude of hundred feet. So that's the first point there. You can see right here is the point of interest. So this is where the waypoints or your drone is going to be focusing on. So the point of interest is as the name suggests, the interest point, what you want to be focused on. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And um, for this example here, what we'll do is we'll make the point of interest over this way. So I know that over this way, occasionally we have boats that will come through this little path here that you can see. 
So we'll make the point of interest on this kind of angle, I guess. And then as I zoom back in again, I can see that this is the initial approach point. But as you can see, you've got so many options within here. So reference, takeoff location, ground level or mean sea level. So you can adjust that. You can adjust the altitude in here. So many different options. You can name each waypoint. You can change the, the drone heading, gimbal orientation. You know, you can really dive into this and make it your own. Uh, we're just going to leave it as the default for now. We're just going to see how it kind of goes. Uh, we can see that point one is the approach and then waypoint A or alpha. Uh, distance from the start is 207. So you can actually like move that and in real time get an update on the actual distance, which is really cool. So what we'll do, um, knowing that we're actually going to be uh, looking over in that direction is we'll probably get the drone to fly in that direction. That would make probably a lot of sense. So we'll move that up there. We'll kind of just make a straight line for this waypoint. Um, I can now click here. That's B that I've got set up. Uh, I should just be able to click on the plus. So you can insert a new waypoint there. That's another, I think I need to zoom in. There we go. Create another waypoint. So that's waypoint C now. So I can just zoom out. Pretty easy as you can see to just kind of set it up on the fly. This is going to be a very basic one. You just got to zoom in to get that insert waypoint. So we'll just do four. Yeah, we'll just do four for this one. So you can see it's pretty much just a straight line. The point of interest is this one up here. Point of interest A, uh, which is alpha. Okay, and that's um, that's also another option there. I can actually just click on the path. So that's the path of all of them. And I can actually drag that to extend that out, as you can see. So you can scale it, also scale the point of interest. So we're not going to do that right now. But you can see as I drag it, it will actually affect all of those uh, waypoints. So once you've set up a path, you can then move that or you know duplicate it and set up a, a brand new waypoint, however you want to go about it. Um, but you can rotate the path if you want. You know, you've got all that control there. So we're not going to do that. And then you can also like scale it as well, which is cool. You can make it a bit tighter or you can really push it out. Uh, so again, nice, easy features to utilize here. Now uh, we can also transform the path as well if we want to kind of do whatever we want there. I'm glad that there's a no option so that doesn't just happen. Um, and there we go. That's kind of like the first mission that I've got set up there. Um, we'll change the point of interest a little bit to over here. And what we will do is we'll actually move this one. We'll move it a little bit over here. So we know that then it's going to be approaching over here. So basically the takeoff point will be here. I'll get it to fly there 100 feet and then it's going to go to each point over here and, and just go on a bit of a curve, but almost a straight path with the focus point being over here. So we'll save that. That's uh, like a mission now that's saved. But before we do that, I can actually click on the, the mission preview here, which is another really powerful feature of DroneLink. Uh, I can click on that and it's going to generate a preview for us and it's going to give us like a real time display of, of what we can expect from the flight path, which again, really powerful gives you a chance to kind of see it in a bit of a spatial setup in, in like an imaginary world almost, which is really nice. So here we go. Let's speed it up just a little bit. So you can see over here, the drone has approached and now it's moving in this direction to the first point. We'll speed it up just a little bit more. And you can see as it's going along this path, it's continuing to look at that first point of interest. So it's going to continue almost turning its view, as you can see in this preview here which is going to be a good test because I've found that when I've set up waypoints with other third party applications, you get a bit of juttery movement almost when you set up certain waypoints where the drone's kind of looking in a direction and moving and trying to focus on like a point of interest. So I think that's going to be a really good test. So now we've got that one set up. So I'm going to set up a few more and then I'm going to go out and test these out. So I'm now going to set up a waypoint smack bang in the middle of the field here. And as per usual, it's going to set up uh, this design here which is actually pretty handy because that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, we're just going to call this one a field test because I'm literally just going to get it to go around the field to see how it can go turning corners. So that one's set up now. That's the first point. We'll make it go. We'll kind of give it a little bit of a curve design here and we'll make the point of interest basically like here near the middle of the field. We'll have B a little bit more here. This is going to be an interesting one because it's going to be a little bit tighter. So it will be interesting to see how this goes. But as I insert that one, I'll get it to come down the home straight here and then we'll add another one that will go over here and then another one that can go right there. So that's how I've got it set up. It's just around a field, basically. The point of interest is gonna be smack bang in the middle. Um, and before I obviously go out and test this, I can run the uh, preview, run the mission here. Loads very quickly. As you can see, it's almost doing an orbit. So that's gonna be an interesting test. Really keen to see how it performs going around these curved points here. Um, as you can see in the preview, it looks very smooth. Let's hope that we can replicate that. This is going to be another really interesting test because having a point of interest so close to the waypoints, who knows how it's going to perform, but it's going to be really cool to see. This is going to be the final one that I set up through the desktop application. Um, it's just going to be called Reveal Shot. 
And the idea here is that I know that this is almost like a point here. And depending on if the water is, uh, or the tide is high or low, will depend on if there's water here. But I thought it could be cool to kind of fly out to see a little bit and have the point of interest looking back at this park here. So that's gonna be the third one. And then I'm gonna go out and test it and see how it all performs. Once I had planned the three missions using the web version of Drone Link, I then literally just drove down the road where I'd set up my missions and set up my Mini 2, launched it, and then I could see the three missions ready to go. Now, once I tapped on load mission, it would set it up and say, you know, you're ready to go. You press the play button, and then the drone will go to that predetermined point that you had set previously when you were at home, and it will then run the entire mission for you. And it's honestly still to this day, even though I've done it with multiple applications, um, and it's been something that's been around for a while, it's still so fascinating to see that happen with a drone. Like once you've set up the path, once you've set up those waypoints, and then to actually see your drone doing it for you, especially when you've planned it at home on a computer, like that's just such a fun experience. The integration between the web version of the app and the actual app on my phone worked great. Those three missions were there. And when I got to the location, it was like precision pinpoint accuracy with all the points I set up. And as it executed the missions, the thing I was looking for was those movements as it's going around like a curved bend to another waypoint. I just wanted to see the smoothness of the waypoints because that's one of the things that I compare to when I think about the other third party apps out there that you can get, whether that's, you know, Lychee or Maven or the other ones that are out there. Um, and I will have a full comparison between all of those apps um, at some point on the channel. But with DroneLink, I was really, really impressed. Like it did a great job of keeping those smooth movements. Um, it was honestly one of the best um, third party apps that I've used for waypoints. It was really nice because you do get a lot of juddery with some of the other applications and it's obviously still early in its development. The Mini 2 um, integration only really just came out. So I think it's gonna get a lot better with time, but in its current form, it works really well. And I love it that it just defaults to have those curved um, angles because it, it was actually quite impressive. Like when I had it going around the field, I honestly thought that it was too tight. Like I wanted to test it to see how juddery the movements would be. And considering it wasn't, you know, really the most amazing setup I had had done because it was so tight and all the waypoints were close together. Um, it looked like it was going quite fast, but it did a great job of actually creating like an orbit look. It did a really nice job of going around those corners and creating an orbit feel around that field. And then with the other waypoint missions I'd set up, they were great. I had that reveal shot and that actually did lose signal briefly, um, but it continued recording. So I just kind of stopped it and returned back and then tested another one. And again, that one worked flawlessly. I love how it just works. You know, I've already loaded it up. I know what to expect out of this mission. Just press the play button. It gives me an estimated time. And then, yeah, it just worked without any sort of thought process. Uh, I had no issues at all. It was great. Through the application, you have a bunch of options and all of these are accessible on the fly. So the actual interface is called on the fly. You can go with the follow mode, the focus mode, 360 degree photos, orbits, uh, paths, which are the waypoints. And there's even advanced missions where you can do spirals and even multiple elements where you add different maneuvers onto a waypoint mission. Um, really cool, there's so many different options here. The waypoint mode on the fly is another great feature, very powerful and uh, feature rich. But what it allows you to do is you can actually just fly to the points that you want to set as waypoints. So as the drone's flying to a point, you just tap add waypoint, move to the next one, add waypoint, and then you can set up the whole mission and then just choose the point of interest or, or make it just follow the heading of the points that you've set. And so you can literally just set it up uh, as like the subject being like a boat, for example, which I kind of missed the boat in this test near the end, but it still gave me a chance to show you that I could literally just set it up on the fly, set those points across, press start, it flew back to the initial point and then tried to showcase uh, the boat there. And I also tested it in another maneuver as well. And it's really easy to set up on the fly, it's great. I mean, I love the idea of setting it up uh, through the desktop, taking your time and really planning it out. But the fact that you can do it while you're there as well is really cool, especially because you actually get the camera feed. So you know like what the perspective is going to be. So if I'm focusing on that boat, I can move to the next point, focus on that boat. And then once I start the mission, it's just intuitively going to figure out that each point I want it to be focusing on the way that the drone was facing as I set that waypoint. And again, really easy to do and something that doesn't take long to do while you're out in the field. And then I went on to the follow me mode or just the follow mode. And this is tracking the signal from 
either the controller or the GPS from your phone. Um, certain apps do it certain ways. I believe it's from the GPS from your actual phone, the signal that's getting sent out. So that's actually what the drone will be following. A really awesome feature that I prefer to active track, which is just the default DJI tracking mode. But the thing that's so cool about the follow mode is even if the drone loses line of sight and it can't even see you, there's something blocking its vision, it's still going to continue tracking you, which is something I can't say for the other tracking modes. Um, and Drone Link again did not disappoint here. I went behind some trees and tried to get some cover there and it continued to follow me. It kept me in the center of the frame for pretty much all the tests. The only time I found it was a bit slow was when I was running towards the drone, so the drone had to fly back. It couldn't really keep me in the middle of the frame, which was interesting to see. Um, but after I stopped moving, it kind of caught up to me and it's like, ah, there he is. But it was a little bit delayed with those movements. When I was walking relatively slowly, it was fine. Um, and when it was behind me, flying towards me, that also seemed to be really perfect as well. So I probably will do some other tests on the channel in the future where I test some faster moving stuff, like whether that's a bike or in my car, just to see how the follow mode um, follows me with some faster moving action. I also tried to test the follow mode at like a lower altitude. I was a little bit nervous because there were a few trees around, um, but you know, I wanted to see how it would go with the finer movements and it was okay, but it couldn't really keep me in the frame for some reason. I think I was just a little bit too close for it to actually get that perfect angle on me and it was just a little bit off with those close shots. Um, so I think once I got that range and once I had that distance from me, it just worked so much better. So again, overall, just like the waypoints mode, it worked flawlessly, it worked as expected, as packaged and yeah, had no issues with it. So overall, Drone Link is a really great offering. Uh, like you heard earlier in the video, there's a chance to win one of five codes. So definitely enter that because I think Drone Link is probably one of the best third-party apps on the market. It's been one of my favorite for a while, and I love that like desktop planner as well. It, it works really well. So that's the end of the video. Uh, let me know how you go. If you do pick up Drone Link, if you do win one of the codes, I'd love to have a bit of a chat in the comment section below. Let me know what other modes seem to be fun to test, because I could definitely do some more videos on Drone Link. Um, but that's it. I'll chat to you in the next video, everyone. Peace. It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best